In our globalized society, there are virtually no ecosystems that are not shaped by people and no people without the need for ecosystem services. A resilience thinking approach investigates how the interaction between people and nature can best be managed. Here are seven principles to help you apply this approach. Principle one, maintain diversity and redundancy. Systems with many different components, be they species, actors, or sources of knowledge, are generally more resilient than systems with few components. Diversity allows some components to compensate for the loss or failure of others. Principle two, manage connectivity. Connectivity can be both a good and a bad thing. Well-connected systems can recover from disturbances more quickly, but overly connected systems may lead to a rapid spread of disturbances. Principle three, manage slow variables and feedbacks. Managing slow variables and feedbacks is often crucial to make sure ecosystems produce essential services. If a slow variable, such as the phosphorus concentration in lake water increases too much, the lake water can rapidly become eutrophied, after which it is very costly and difficult to return to a non-eutrophied state. Feedbacks can either reinforce or dampen change. An example of a positive feedback loop are grass fires, which promote further growth of the grasses and curb the growth of native shrub species. An example of a dampening feedback is sanctioning or punishment that occurs when someone breaks a rule. Principle four, foster complex adaptive systems thinking. Complex adaptive systems thinking means accepting that within a social ecological system, several connections are occurring at the same time on different levels. It also means accepting unpredictability and uncertainty and acknowledging a multitude of perspectives. Principle five, encourage learning. Social ecological systems are always in development, so there is a constant need to revise existing knowledge and stimulate learning. More collaborative processes can also help. Principle six, broaden participation. There are a range of advantages to broad and well-functioning participation. An informed and well-functioning group has the potential to build trust and a shared understanding, both fundamental ingredients for collective action. Principle seven, promote polycentric governance. Polycentricity, a governance system in which multiple governing bodies interact, can help support collective action in times of change. But it is also vulnerable to tensions between actors and institutions. Involving a wide range of stakeholders means striking a balance between openness and mandates for decision making. <laughs>